Okay, so this is prompted a little bit by um, uh, Vox blogged a couple of days back. Uh, I think he called it a challenge to Catholics. Uh, he made a blog post on one of my blog posts about how I see, um, you know, people who uh, still think Bergoglio is the Pope or Ratzinger is the Pope. In particular, I, w I mentioned Anne Barnhart in my blog post. Uh, but it applies to all the so-called nominal Catholics that um, think sedevacantism or sedeprivationism, which is the more correct term, is wrong. Um, and as a result of that blog on uh, on Vox's blog, um, you know, quite a few comments, like over 150 comments or whatever, um, several of them by a guy that I've argued with before and I've talked about before in one of my videos. I don't know which one, way back, you know, 50... 35, something like that, I don't know. Anyway, um, this boomer, who we shall call John, um, and I had lengthy flame wars about uh, Catholicism, sedeprivationism, sedevacantism, why he thinks Bergoglio was Pope, blah, blah, blah. And as I've mentioned before, one of these uh, long uh, flame wars online got to the point where he said, you know, like a typical boomer, you don't know what you're talking about. I was figuring out, uh, you know, the code of canon law when you were still in diapers, that sort of stuff. At which point I said, oh, well, now you've actually demonstrated that you're lying and you have never read the code of canon law of 1917 and you're talking nonsense. And at which point he tried to proceed to quote canonic law to me. And he failed dismally because I have the code of canon law right here. And what he quoted to me was not from the code of canon law of 1917, but was from the fake code of canon law of 1983. And, I, and then I knew I had him. Because I said, no, you're talking nonsense. That's the code of 1983. You don't know what the hell you're talking about, as I've been saying for months. At which point he quickly panicked, tried to, <laughs> to find the code of canon law online, and you can't. There is only an abridged version of the Code of Canon Law online, and it's pretty hard to find. And the only other way you can get a Code of Canon Law of 1917 online is if you pay money for it. And then you still only have access to like a digital version that you can't download to your computer. It's just like on your screen. Um, so really, the only way is if you actually buy the book, which is about $70, $80. I don't know what it is on Amazon. Um, and at that point, to his credit, he kept quiet. He didn't try and double down because he realized I got him. You know, months pass and, you know, I can see his attitude has changed. And one thing about this guy, although he's, you know, like, a, to be blunt, and John, don't take it badly, but he's ignorant, you know, he's ignorant about a lot of stuff to do with space, astronomy. Uh, he's not a flat earther, but he does believe we went to the moon the way they say that we went to the moon. And that just didn't happen that way. We did go to the moon, but not that way. That's another video. That's video number three, right? If you want to go look at that. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you the story, that there is a point to it, which uh, is the point of this whole video. As a result of, blo of the blog that Vox put up and the conversation I had with him, you know... Um, he made a comment on Vox's blog, which I screen captured, and then I sent it to him privately. And I said, you know, if this is what you're saying, then I don't see how you can argue that I'm wrong about my position. Uh, to which he said, oh, I'm sure you don't see that I'm wrong. And then he admitted and he said, well, you know, and I said, the only thing you can say is that you don't like my style and you don't like my style of rhetoric, but you can't actually argue against me. And, and he said, yeah, well, basically, I don't like how you say that, you know, uh, Catholics that don't agree with you are, are like Satanists or whatever. And I said, I've, I've never said that. I've never said that anybody who doesn't agree with me is necessarily a Satanist. I do use heavy rhetoric because it's important to do so. Let me explain it in a way that everybody can understand. Why do cattle prods exist? Because you need them to move herds of cattle. This is the same. You need a guy like me that sets a fire under a few people's asses and then gets the whole herd moving and all of a sudden, oh, well, now they're moving the right direction and, you know, they avoid falling into the canyon and go back to the ranch and they uh, can graze in the proper pastures. So 
if my rhetoric is sometimes rude, harsh, or whatever, it's on purpose. You know, it's on purpose. Plus, if you read what I'm actually writing, although the rhetoric might be heavy-handed, it's not wrong. It's not a lie. My analogies might make you very uncomfortable. You know, or, or my facts might make you very uncomfortable. You know, when I tell you that Bergoglio is the vicar of pedophiles on earth, I'm not kidding. That's not even rhetoric. That's factual. If you look at who he protected, who he promoted, who he hangs around with, you know, who he has dealings with, he is absolutely a pedophile protector. Absolutely. He's the worst promoter of pedophilia that the fake Catholic Church has ever had since 1958. You know, and that's saying something. Because there, there's been some serial abusers in the church, but, you know, Bergoglio is, is the king of the pedophile protectors. Obviously, he is the vicar of pedophiles on earth. That's his official title in the Novos Orco Church. And, you know, this guy, John, finally sort of admitted that he didn't have an argument against me. He just didn't like my style. And to that, you know, we then had a pretty civil conversation, briefly, but uh, but much more civil than we usually have. Although, you know, even in the arguments we had, I've always respected the fact that he was honest. He was wrong, but he, to his mind, he wasn't lying. And when I did catch him out in a lie, that he, he said out of bluster, you know, he didn't, he wasn't intentionally trying to deceive, he just thought he knows better, so he just like went with it. And it's like, mm, no, you fucked up, you know. That's a lie. And he didn't even deny that he lied, which I appreciate because, you know, we all make mistakes. And he said in the heat of the moment or whatever. Uh, and then later, although it's taken months and he's admitted it, then he said, look, I've got some trip wires too. And you push all those buttons and he just basically, you know, makes him lose his shit. So he can't think properly. And then he just out of reaction tells me to go fuck myself and that I'm a heretic and blah, blah, blah. But this brought up something very important, which brings me to the point of this video and why I've used the particular thumbnail for this video that I've used, the loyalty program. Get brainwashed by it. See, loyalty is a tricky thing. Loyalty is one of the virtues that I um, hold very highly, um, both for myself and others. You know, if a guy is loyal to me, even when I'm wrong, which is wrong, and I'm I'm the first to tell people that I have, um, you know, anybody that's trained with me over the years, whether it was when I was doing karate, when I was doing sistema, whatever, will tell you that I reject stupid loyalty. I reject it hard. You know, I, I'll have people that would have followed me into hell, but not because I was correct, but because they got, you know. I don't know, they got charmed by me, by my, my natural, handsome, intelligent looks, or I, I don't know what, right? Because I'm not exactly a people person. But, um, you know, I do inspire loyalty in men um, and women in a different way. Uh, but, you know, when I'm talking about, you know, martial arts, stuff like that, or some kind of uh, hard uh, life situations where they... A leader is required because there are physical or dangerous situations or whatever. I do inspire loyalty in men, primarily because I'm a very loyal person. Um, I give loyalty to those who are deserving of it, um, right up onto and past death, you know. Um, but I've become wiser as I get older, and I've learned to understand who is truly deserving of loyalty. And the only person that is perfect is our Lord Jesus Christ. So that loyalty you can give unconditionally and absolutely, and you should. And the closer you can come to an absolute loyalty to Jesus Christ, in the correct form, in the correct way, the, the closer you are to bliss, truth, certainly peace and serenity, a lot more in life than you have without it. But as far as human beings go, there are different types of loyalty. For example, I can have loyalty to my children. My children could be the worst fucking human beings on earth and still have loyalty to them. You know, uh, God forbid that one of my kids ever grows up to be, I don't know, some serial murderer of, of babies or something. 
and you know if that happens you have to put him down yourself right but that's still a form of loyalty right but if my kid turns out to be a bad person whatever i you know i, I would never not punish them i would never not try and correct them i would never not try and um, help them become better or see things in, in the correct way but i will never be able to disown my children they might disown me that's possible that can happen you know disagreements whatever but i would never be able to disown my kids uh, i think that any parent that is somewhat worthy of the name understands this you know even in the extreme case where one of your children you know actually does become a serial murderer of children or something and you have to take him out yourself because if that's the case you know i would you know i would take him out myself whether it's to make sure he gets locked up or dies or you know whatever if that were the case that is still a form of loyalty it doesn't you know the, pun the administration of correction of punishment even in most extreme of cases does not mean that you lack loyalty and this is the difference you know there is loyalty that is merited there is loyalty that is not merited for example a bunch of people were loyal to you know th that freak that the jonestown mask you know like whatever however many thousand people or whatever all drank the kool-aid and forced it on their own kids so they all died they all committed suicide because of some weird guru and, you know it's not the only guy that's done that L. Ron Hubbard has got a whole bunch of people still all brainwashed into like his weird, uh, you know, organized cult. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, you know, you name it. There's all sorts, you know, I'm talking about the big ones and pissed some Mormons off now, no doubt, and some Jehovah's Witnesses, no doubt, and some, you know, Scientologists, no doubt. But so what? You know, the, the point is, even when you're dealing with the truth, so even when you're dealing with a good person who's trying to do the best he can and i'm going to use myself for an example not because i'm such a good human being but because people did come to our training classes saw what i could do you know sparred with me tried to fight me whatever they realized oh, this guy really knows his shit. he can kick my ass anyway six ways to sunday he must be the guru i'm not going to follow him as my guru and i would reject that i'd be like i'm not your guru dude I just know more than you right now train hard maybe sometime from now you'll know more than me who knows you know just keep going but i'm no guru i don't want your following i don't want your loyal you know i don't want you blindly following me as of as though i'm some kind of you know cult of personality i don't like that shit. never have and i'm never i don't give it to people and i don't want it from people so even when you're dealing with something true, like Catholicism, the Church, Christianity, Jesus, so on, you can give your loyalty in a wrong way. And this has been used throughout human history to use and abuse good people, good, loyal people. You know, there's a brilliant book written by Walter John Williams called Voice of the Whirlwind. Uh, it's one of my favorite books that I read when I was in my 20s. And I related to it quite a lot. The main character in it was somebody that I could relate to very, very well. Uh, Stuart was his name, I believe, and he was a clone. And uh, it's quite, an in, quite a nice science fiction story. But the main point of it was that sort of one of the main baddies was this guy's sort of like martial arts teacher which i related to because you know i had an instructor that like, you kind of blindly not blindly but you know there's all the honor samurai thought, ethics uh, budo you know the concepts of honor and so on and um i was raised that way <clears throat> in my family we've you know my, my father was a fanatic of karate when i was born and besides that you know in our family we've always had the concept of a man's word being his bond so there's a lot of that going around and um in the in the book this guy's teacher who trained him and you know the, he's good and everything but didn't have an ideology he just used the ideology to to bend people to his will to make 
to have a group of loyal soldiers that will do whatever he says just because they believe the stuff, but he doesn't believe it himself. And that's what, you know, fake priests do. That's what imposters do. That's what the people that have taken over the Catholic Church buildings and so on do. They're imposters. They're fakers. And they try and use your loyalty. They try and use your truth to twist you. And you give them loyalty because you're humble and you're saying, oh, but, you know, if they're saying to me that I need to believe because I don't have the right to choose who's Pope. And, and it's true. You don't have the right to choose who's Pope. The church has that right. And the church has chosen for you. That's what the whole point of canon law is. And it tells you who is and isn't the Pope very clearly. So, you know, what became let's say, more evident for me. I knew it, but it, it sort of drove the point home, is that, you know, there are really a lot of people out there who honestly, truthfully believe they're being good Catholics by not questioning the fact that Bergoglio is a figure of pedophiles. And they think they're being good Catholics by, you know, not questioning the Pope. And they're wrong. And they're wrong on the facts. They're wrong on the arguments. And if they take the time and the trouble to read through that blog post of mine, which is a challenge to all Catholics, and another blog post that I will put up shortly. Because one of the other comments was uh, from a guy called, called uh, you know, his nickname on Vox's blog was M Mrs. Matt, who said, oh, these guys are refuted set of vacantes and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, you know, do you want to debate them? And I'm like, no, I'm not really interested in internet bum fights. I've had one with Jay Dyer. He completely lost, got squished like a bug. But it doesn't matter because all the idiots, you know, are looking at internet bum fight entertainment. They're not actually following the argument. So um, the majority probably thought, oh, you lost, Kurgan, you lost. I didn't lose shit. That's why I did the, the, the write-up on my blog. And that's why I said I would do a write-up before I had the argument. Because I knew that that's what video is like. You know, that's what people want. It's just a bum fight. But nobody actually pays attention. The people who do pay attention, who read the write-up, every single one of the people that has read the write-up has come back to me. Some of them have apologized and said, you know, I thought you'd lost the fight. Then I read the write-up and I realized, shit, you're right. Jay Dyer has got nothing, you know. And this is the same. So this is another guy, John Souza, I think is his name. Anyway, he wrote something about, oh, why I said if I can't them. And it's a pack of lies that I've just torn to shred. I've literally spent like an hour just writing in between, commenting on everything that he says, and I've torn it to shreds. And I am going to put that up, um, you know, because uh, this guy said, oh, these guys will debate you, whatever. I said, oh, I don't care to the debate. I'll debate in writing. The guy's got his writing out. Fine. I'm not torn it to pieces. And there is no coming back from what I've just done to this guy's work. So I will put that up too. But it's important because most people, like cattle, only act on emotions. They don't actually take the time to read and understand things. So they're giving their loyalty emotionally to something that is completely wrong. And it's, you know, it's not good for them. So I have tried to explain this in my uh, the blog post that um, that Vox refers to, which is a challenge to all Catholics and Anne Barnhart in particular, because she reaches a lot of people, and you know if she took the time to go through the arguments, I thought she, there isn't an argument against what I'm saying because it uses canon law. It's a legal argument. It's like maths, you know. It's like people are saying, you know, they're saying the two and two and two and uh, there's ninety seven. And they're just getting confused because there's a lot of numbers and they're not sure about the operators and people are lying to them about when it's a plus and when it's a minus and when it's a multiplication. But I'm good at maths, so I can follow the whole argument and go like, no, 2 plus 2 is 4 and then times 2 again, you know, that's 8 and then you add 3 and that makes it 11 and I come to the right number. And anybody that follows my work can't find anything wrong with it because there isn't, because it is math. So, those of you that still, you know, don't think that sedificantism is real, whatever, I strongly suggest, first of all, you have to educate yourself. And as a starting point, um, you know, the, the little book, Believe, is still, I'm going to show you some books that are, this is the quickest, easiest way to get there, just because it's a tiny book, it's only like 100 pages, uh, it's less than 100 pages, actually, it's 97 pages, there you go. 
97 pages, but this has got a lot of people to convert to Catholicism, you know, people that weren't even Christian, um, and people that were Protestants that have moved over, and even one Jewish guy living in Israel, surrounded only by Jews, who's like, as soon as I find a priest, I'm getting baptized, becoming Catholic. So, and if you want a bit of background or whatever, you know, you can also read um, Bearing False Witness by this guy, Rodney Stark, who's also, I've just bought this book, um, that's just his name. He's wrote Bearing False Witness, which explains how the Catholic Church has been vilified and a bunch of lies that you probably assume are true. I, I did quite a few of the things that are in that book I thought were true and the absolute nonsense. But he also wrote uh, several other books, one of which, which is really good, is called God's Battalions, about the Crusades, excellent. And now I just bought this one, just because Rodney Stark is an awesome historian. He's not Catholic, by the way. Um, he, he's just got to bug up his ass about liars. You know, he doesn't like people lying about history. And he, he's one of the very few historians that names and shames other academics that lie about historical facts, and he, and he exposes them. He says, this is what they lied about, this is what they did. You know, it's, I, I love the guy, you know, I wish I could meet him sometime. I did drop him an email, but I don't know if he's old or if he's still around, or if he doesn't reply to emails, maybe gets many, I don't know. Anyway, I've also had a bunch of emails as a result of Vox's blog post, and so I just wanted to caution you be careful who you give your loyalty to and how and in which way. Because you think you're giving loyal, your loyalty to Jesus Christ if you're a nominal Catholic. But in reality, what you're doing is they're subverting your loyalty to Jesus and using it to give themselves your loyalty to essentially Satanists, pederasts, liars, conmen, and thieves. So, you know, be careful. You have to understand who you're giving lo your loyalty to in order to do so correctly. Um, and that's basically what uh, what I wanted to say on this one. Uh, there's, you know, there's a bunch of other details that I'd like to get into, but then it's just going to make the video probably too long. Anyway, I will probably over the next day or so post up on my blog the, um, the takedown of, what's this guy's name, just so I get it right. Uh, it is what's his name let's see it's gonna be a long post because uh, you know it was seven pages of his lies and after my comments it becomes like uh, 19 pages or it was I can't remember maybe it was 10 pages now it's 19 pages yeah it's called the errors of sede vacantism and ecclesiastical law by John Salza and mr. John Salza if he's alive and around is gonna be uh, well, I would say pretty thoroughly embarrassed by uh, my um, vivisectioning of his duplicitous piece of rubbish that he wrote. And apparently there's another guy as well that, that uh, has debunked sort of vacantism and yeah, no, they've done no such thing. See, it's impossible to debunk the truth. You have to lie and make shit up. And when you lie and make shit up against some kind of slight autist with a high IQ like myself, uh, you've got a problem. Because I'm not going to quit until I have turned over every rock and demonstrated beyond any shadow of a doubt that you lied and are wrong and given all the proof for it with all the links and all the references. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, it's also, I also received a really good email um, just gonna see if I can quickly find it and just to give the guy his name because it was a uh, 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 ah there we go Michael Michael Daly I hope you don't mind me mentioning your name uh, he'd written to me before and um, <laughs> he, you know he wrote some other stuff but he basically said I've seen your post referenced by Fox on his blog today. I didn't see one comment from a person that indicated they both read and understood your post. It's kind of amazing. I've never seen MPAI, most people are idiots, on display so clearly and broadly. I hope you get someone to take a reasonable crack at dismantling it. <laughs> so, you know, even while he's telling me that, like, you know, shit, there isn't a single person that's actually commented that Vox's blog that's bothered to read and understand what the hell you wrote. Um, 
you know, I still hope somebody actually gives it a shot because it's interesting, you know. But I mean, I've had, I don't know, at least a dozen emails on this topic and there's like over a hundred comments at Vox's blog and there's some more comments at my blog. And uh, the thing is, he's right. You know, probably of a hundred people that come across the post, I doubt if one has actually read it. You know, maybe it takes a thousand before. I think, you know, Vox has a few thousand people hit his blog every day. So it probably takes a, a thousand people before one actually reads through the stuff and understands it and and is one of those people that allows facts to affect their their how they live their life, you know. I'm one of those people. I let facts affect my life. Emotion doesn't really come into it. I mean, think of this. I trained hard in karate for like a couple of decades at least, you know, more. Three decades at least. Yeah. At least three decades I was training in karate pretty constantly. You know, I took breaks, I traveled a lot, but I was always training and it was part of ingrained in me, it was part of my identity. The first time I came across one of these Russians that could fold me like a pretzel and do whatever he wanted and I couldn't even touch him, I dropped karate there and then. You know, it was my instructor had given me his belt. Uh, you know, when I graduated to the black belt, he gave me his belt, which his instructor had given him. That was a whole history of that. My father was, you know, he's uh, a highly ranked karateka and so whatever. Didn't matter because the truth is the truth. And this Russian dude beat the shit out of me without breaking a sweat with one hand up behind his back. So I started training with him till I got good enough to kind of understand what the hell's going on, you know. And that's it. The, you know, the truth matters. Facts matter. Reality matters. Your opinion, your feelings, your emotions, they're only important to you and most of the time they're deceiving you unless you have a specific type of mind that has what I call good instincts. And when I say instincts, I don't mean the animalistic urges that you can't control or whatever. I mean good instincts, God-derived, God-placed, God let's say, instincts that can save your life, that can be good, that even if you don't know how you know, but you know the truth about something, and then later you figure out, oh, I didn't even know how the hell I knew that, but it was true. You know, there is that, but, um, you know, you should use your reason. Your reason and logic is, is a requirement as a Catholic, as a Christian. You can't avoid reason. You know, reason is why we have a brain. That's why God gives us a brain. Use your brain. If you can't think, if you can't read, if you can't be bothered to read, you know, 20 pages of stuff on what is or isn't the real Catholic Church, and you call yourself a Catholic, really? It's not that hard. Plus, you know, I try to make it entertaining. Um, at least it's entertaining to me when I use my hardcore rhetoric, which pisses people off. If I'm going to have to discuss things with idiots and liars and morons, I might as well entertain myself, you know? Anyway... I hope for those of you who are not idiots, not liars, and not morons, that uh, you will investigate this stuff a little bit more. And um, I'm looking forward to the responses I'm going to have on the next blog post I'm putting up, where I take this John Salsa guy to pieces. That'll be interesting. All right. Well, uh, have a good night. <laughs>